optional um, networking day where you can come together and we'll come to like a social gathering and be able to uh, network with each other outside of the gift and outside of the pain, and outside of the moment. So we can actually really get to know each other before we get to that point. And then Saturday morning, which is where it actually kicks off, we're actually going to um, have somebody to come and uh, start off, kick it off with intercession with us personally, all together as a unit, not behind, uh, behind everybody and behind, um, the actual church service is going on later on that day. We're actually going to have it for ourselves. And then we're going to have somebody come and speak. And also we're going to have a soaking moment because one thing we want to do is since we're coming in together in unity, we want to make sure we're all together, one accord in our minds, in our hearts and everything in unity. So we want to go ahead and prepare for that. And then the rest of the day we'll prepare for that production and we'll have unity pieces. We'll have uh, individuals ministering. It will be awesome. So I would say come as you can. And the actual registration is actually um, optional. It's a donation, but it's $5. Crazy thing. That $5 will be put towards <laughs> you guys. So please, if you can give that out, if you want to give more, if it's on your heart to give more, please, it's free. You can go ahead and do that. And where's but, it at, um, um, Can you tell us where it's at? Oh, it is at Carrollton, Georgia, uh, 555 Charles Lane, which is my, my church, the Wild Church Without Walls, the Hope Center. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be there. <laughs> Representing them. So, yeah, it will be there in Carrollton, Georgia. And this will be like our first location. Pretty sure we'll move throughout the time, as long, um, throughout the years, as long as we have it. So, this is our first location. This is our first time kicking this off. So, please join us. Definitely, please join us. So, uh, continuing on to tonight's lesson, I am teaching on faith. And especially as a creative, this is big. This is something we actually have to jump on and make sure we have within us. So, before I even dive deep into faith, you know, uh, let's talk about faith. What is faith? So, um, I've done research and I definitely did go across everywhere just to try to get this definition. But the sum of what I got is basically the ability to have complete trust are to have complete belief that God is able to do while being blind or oblivious to what he, uh, the progress of what he's actually doing. And you can find this uh, also in Hebrew, Hebrews 11 and 1, where it says, now faith is the substance of man, uh, substance for, of man for all things that are hoped for, for the evidence of things seen and unseen. One thing I definitely want to tackle before we even dive down into faith is how um, um, throughout the years, we've kind of adopted and taken away from the definition of faith, especially with religious mentality. We kind of <laughs> twisted it a little bit. So we adopted on the different definition of faith, and this is how we act with it. This, this is what we're basically saying with the new definition of faith which is completely crazy. We say, God, I have faith that I'm about to get a car. God, I'm about to have, I, I got faith that I'm about to get a house. I, I got faith. And when we're saying that, we see progress. We see, you know, I, I'm having money to come to this car. I'm, I'm in a financial good standing to get this house. I have a, et cetera, progress going on. When that's not what faith actually is. Faith is actually when you have uh, not only in the good moments, but in the bad moments when you don't even see the progress happening. You're, it's completely trusting and completely believing in God. Completely across the boards. So, you know, let's not twist that up anymore. And I want to bring to our attention one thing about faith that is crazy that we always miss. We always jump to the portion that we talk about the unseen and the, uh, the evidence of the unseen or seen. But we never talk about that first part of faith when it talks about the uh, when it talks about um the substance of all things that are hoped for. The substance. If we translate that over to ESV, guess what it says? It's the assurance. The assurance of all things that are hoped for. So crazy thing is, it's crazy that as long as I have faith, I have the assurance to get what I need from God. That's all I have. That's all I need. And that's honestly all what you have, all that you need, honestly, is literally have to have faith. And that is your assurance that you don't need anything else. There's no other ties to it. It's your assurance. As long as I have faith, God is going to give me what I need. 
So and, and it's crazy as believers, as well, not as uh, not only as believers, but as creatives. The essence of your faith is supposed to overflow into your creative side. I've seen it so much uh, across everywhere, where we uh, as creatives. We uh, say, God, I have faith in my uh, faith that you're going to give me choreography. I have faith you're going to do this within my ministry. I have faith you're going to do that within my ministry. I have faith you're going to put me on a big stage. I have faith that you're going to connect me with some big people. But when it comes to your life, where is the faith? Do you have faith in your personal life? And the crazy thing is that nothing starts from the, in, within the gift. It starts within your life. Yeah, it's, like, it's hard because truthfully, how am I going to trust God in the gift if I don't even trust God in my life or with my life? Ugh. How? How can we do that? How can we do that? So going back over the things uh, before I even uh, go into the next portion, I promise you guys, I'm about to be quick. I'm about to uh, get out of here. But um, the uh, definition of faith is the ability to have complete belief or trust in God that he's about to do something, even when we don't uh, see his progress even when we're blind or oblivious to it. And then the next portion is, um, as creatives, it's definitely important to have faith in your personal life and allow it to overflow in your creative side. So um, I want to do this little quick thing. God shifted me to this while I was getting this uh, whole thing up, and it was crazy. I was like, God, how in the world are we going to do this? But Matt, is, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, what I see is, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to have math examples, and I'm going to just shout out equations. Y'all can go ahead and get off. Uh, Y'all can unmute yourselves and shout it out as much as you want, you know. It's all open session here, you know. And um, basically, we're going to see how we operate in our faith versus how we actually should operate in our faith. And it's crazy. It's, it's like, wow, how are we going to connect our faith with math? It's like, what the fuck? It's crazy. I promise you, it's going to be fun. So um, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves, you know, just a little bit. It's interactive, you know, just, just unmute yourselves. So I'm going to shout out a... Y'all better come on. Don't make me come for you. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. You see how so I'm going to shout out a math equation. Reggie. Uh-huh, I'm calling you out. <laughs> I'm going to shout out a math equation. And I promise you, it's not going to be mind-boggling. You're not going to think too hard. It's not going to be too crazy. I promise you. But um, first one is fine. It's fine. Well, um, first one is, uh, what's three plus two? Five. 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 You see? Okay, that's good. Everybody got it. All right, so I'm going to step it up a bit. We're going to go into the multiplication. What's four times four? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Now, I'm going to step it up just a little bit. I'm going to step it up. I'm going to step it up. All right. What's negative five times four? Negative 20. I like that. I like that. So next one, negative 12 times negative 12. How's it? Negative 144. I heard a different, I heard a bunch of different answers. I would say it's positive 144. All right. That's a correct answer. Now, okay. So I want to bring to you guys attention of how we just operated our faith mm -hmm. there and how we actually operate versus how we should. So one big thing is, um, this is the first thing that God pointed out to me. Uh, if you notice, nobody really tried to look up the answers. Nobody tried to write it down on a piece of paper. Nobody tried to go to the textbook, a math textbook, even though you probably won't have that around. Nobody even tried to ask anybody. And the crazy thing God showed me with that is we trust in ourselves before we trust in the source. Mm. We'll literally pull everything out on the inside of us and try to get that before we even go to a hey, praise the Lord stuff. Thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, we literally will try to do that and get it out of us before we get it out of God. And we're not supposed to do that because the Bible says what? Trust in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not into our own understanding. Crazy thing is he says that for a reason. There's a whole bunch of different reasons why he says that. I give you one. Sometimes when we lean to our own um, understanding, our own trust within ourselves, we subject ourselves out of what we're supposed to do. I'll give you a whole, um, I'll tell you an example from me, truthfully. Um, I was about to go under the house, right? And my purpose and my objective was to get something out from under the house and bring it into the house. 
So what I immediately did, I started thinking in my own mind before I even went under the house. I'm like, dog, under the house is dark. There's a lot of stuff under the house. Is moist up in there? Is bugs? Maybe a snake. I'm over exaggerating with that, but it may be a snake. It may be something I don't know that's going to be under there. So immediately with my own mindset of me leaning to my own understanding and my own faith within myself, I immediately subjected myself out of what I was purposed to do within that moment. I did the opposite of what God literally told me to do, which is to trust in him with all thy heart and lean not into my own understanding. I got myself in trouble. You want a scripture reference? I'll give you one. We come to uh, Moses at the burning bush. God literally spoke to him in that moment, had a whole conversation about the objective and the purpose that he wanted Moses to do. What Moses immediately did after that. He was like, dog, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. I'm thinking, I'm leaning on to my own understanding and saying, you know what, I know me. I can't speak. There's no way I can get this out correctly. You, you might call it the wrong one. And that's not what we're supposed to do. And it's crazy. As creatives, we can't do that. Because literally, once we start trusting in God, we're able to trust in his confirmation within us for our giftings and everything that he pours out of us. This, this role that we're on as creatives, when we pour out and when we say stuff, we got to have some type of confirmation. Are we going to think ourselves as crazy? If we start thinking about the own things we say, and it's like, wow, maybe it's kind of crazy what I'm saying. Instead of trusting God with all our heart and leaning out to our own understanding and trusting that everything that God is pouring out of us is right. It's not crazy. So that's one point. Another point uh, God showed me was based off the measure of our faith is what we measured with for the response of our obedience within that time. If you notice, when you didn't kind of know the question, you know, the answer to the question, you were like, oh, maybe I'm gonna wait to give the answer immediately. I don't know. I don't know yet. I, you didn't have complete faith. So with that being said, you didn't immediately jump out and say the answer just yet. You took some time before you actually jumped into the action of obedience when that's not what we're supposed to do. It's a double negative because truthfully, you're supposed to have complete faith in the beginning, complete trust, complete belief from the jump. And even if you don't, sometimes God's grace it steps in and says, even if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, and that'll be fine. But what are we going to do with that mustard seed? Are we just going to keep it in our hand and say, oh, you know what? This is a mustard seed that looks nice in my hand. Or am I going to plant that mustard seed in the ground and try to get a harvest from it because I have faith? You can't allow your obedience to be delayed all because you don't feel like you have enough faith. You either have complete faith or you're going to give God the faith that you have already right there. So that's another point that God gave me. And another point that God also gave me, which is crazy. This is, uh, this is the last point that God gave me that was, like, so crazy. Whew. In faith, there is failure. And uh, let me explain that before uh, it gets taken away. Um, sometimes you're going you're gonna to fail. Sometimes you're not going to get it right the first time. Sometimes it's not going to be 100% the first time. And that is okay. That is the first biggest way to build your faith. And not only that, but it's crazy, but sometimes you have to fail to even get stronger faith. Like if I didn't, even then it proves to you that you trust God even that much more. Like God, if I, do I really trust you even if I fail? Even if I don't get this right, do I still trust you anyway? Or do I trust to get it 100% right the first time and just, if I don't get it right, then I'm just, I'm done. You can't have that. And the biggest thing about it is faith is not just something that we just have. Sometimes we do struggle. Sometimes we're not going to have complete faith. And that's where the grace of God comes in. It is, faith is a process too. So you're always continuously working towards getting that forward. Always getting to that point. 
So I encourage you guys from this point on to definitely go after getting that faith. And that concludes my teaching for tonight. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, no, you got another hour, sir. We're so used to going in and stuff. <laughs> I'm not ready. Long, <laughs> I mean, like, do I need to go home already? No, that's not happening. I'm not ready to go home yet. <laughs> so check this out. So let me ask you a question, uh, preacher. Um so what you're telling me is, and everybody that's on here tonight, is that everybody, in order for us to succeed, we got to have a component of a whole trust situation. Am I right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I have to trust then, like, for instance, because my case, you know, I come from humble beginnings. You know, um, especially my husband, he was a cotton picker. For those of you that did not know that, Pops used to cop, you know, pick cotton. He's from South Carolina. So he said, as soon as I can get out of here, I'm joining the military. He's been in it since he was 17. And so, but he trusted that he was going to be somebody. So you're telling me that even in the future, we got to trust that we're going to become somebody. Mm -hmm. Faith it has to go the whole way. Because like it is, um, faith is the assurance that is going to happen. It's not just, uh, it's like I said in the beginning, substance, if you translate it, it's the assurance. So it's not just I'm be going to become somebody, but God, I have faith and I trust completely that that's going to happen. And based off that, it's going to happen. And it's going, well, and it's not always through our expectations or our perspective. We can say, okay, I want to become Will Smith. And God says, you know what? I got other things called for you, but I'm going to call you into a great person. So our faith says, basically, God, wherever you take me, I know you're about to do something that's going to progress me into something greater. Right. So that's what it uh, actually promises. So do you think that being connected to the right people helps our component of faith? Absolutely. Definitely. Can you break that down? Because truthfully, it's, um, it's support and it's encouraging. It's hard to be around people that don't have faith, that always go around and say, you know what, this, this is just not going to happen. This is not, it's not going to work out. And it's just, uh, it actually boosts you down from where you actually are instead of encouraging you. Even in the moments when you're weary, Instead of you just being weird by yourself, you have somebody next to you saying, you know what, have faith. Let's encourage that. Let's work on that. Let's put that. Let's grind towards it. Let's actually continue going on our faith. And God sees that. So it actually encourages. It's actually better for you to be around more people that have faith versus people that don't have it. Okay. So I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. I'm just flowing with this, y'all. Y'all help me out now. Y'all inbox me if you have any questions. Y'all come on, help me out here. This is way too soon here. No, no, no. The devil is a liar. <laughs> anyway, so let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if we have a component of faith, that it will be helpful if we are stuck in depression? or um or stuck in a, this complacent position to where we believe that god cannot use us do you think that's helpful i say it's definitely helpful because one thing about faith is it's not just assurance it's not just the action of it's going to be done but it's also our hope and again it's also our assurance so it's like yo i can hold on to it and i can say you know what if i have nothing else to say i can actually encourage myself and actually, it's not even just an encourager, it's a reminder, truthfully, that God is actually about to do what he says he's going to do. So as long as I keep repeating that to myself, and even if it doesn't look like it right now, I can still remind myself and get myself through it and praise my way through it as long as I have faith. 
for those of you that do not know, you know he's a mimer, right? Just to let y'all know. If you haven't picked <laughs> it up on it yet, if you haven't picked up on that yet, I just want to let you know. Okay. So, so Fred, let me ask you another question, Reverend Elder Dr. Robinson. Um, <laughs> my question for you is this. So if 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 God has been putting this dream in me, right? I mean, this real dream, this like, I just can't put it down. I mean, like every time I wake up, I think about it. Every time I go to sleep, I think about it. It's the new dimension. It's something that God is releasing to me. I'm excited about it. Just like Crystal, she just launched, you know, Crystal Clear Moments, uh, which mm -hmm. is encouragement for people with bereavement. And God told her to speak on it. And, um, so do you think that I'm, I'm sorry, somebody's passing by my building. I want to make sure I don't have to pull up my gun. Now let me stop. <laughs> anyway, Gigi, you know what location I'm at. Don't play with me. So, um, I'm in the hood y'all, but anyway, so when, when, when we having that desire and God just won't let us put it down and he just speaking to me with this one thing that we're supposed to do. Do you think that we should launch it immediately or should we hold still and wait until he tells us declarably to step out on the faith? And what does the first step look like? I'm going to turn my camera on while you answer that. Gotcha. Um, so I believe that um, with faith does not mean immediately jump out with that action just yet. Faith means, okay, I believe it and I trust it. Actually, faith is the first step to it all. Faith is actually saying, okay, God, I believe and I confirm that this is going to happen, but it does not mean it's going to happen soon. That's one thing that we have to do with our faith. We have to change our perception and our perspective with faith. So with that being said, just because I have faith does not mean, okay, if I step out, uh, if I have faith, that I'm gonna get a house. That doesn't mean I just step out and go get a house immediately the next day. Truthfully, if my credit ain't right, then that's practical. You know what I'm saying? If my financial banking is not right, then that's practical. So faith just says, God, I believe it's gonna happen. And it puts me in the posture in my heart and completely, well, not even just in your heart, in your mind to say, God, now I'm ready for you to move. Now I'm ready for you to put me in those positions and put me in that preparation mode are in those steps that I need to get to where that needs to go. So definitely, I wouldn't say it's something that you have, to, uh, faith is not immediately movable, but faith is basically giving, making you open for that access. Right, okay. So one of the questions that was just inboxed to me is um, how would you handle someone with a wavy faith? They're in and out, bobbing and weaving, you know, mm -hmm. uh, going to the left and going to the right and going to the left and going to the right, you know, like they can't make up their mind whether they want to be in faith walking or not in faith walking. Mm. Well, I say it in two ways. Um, we're actually, is we're completely examples of this all the time. One, allow that light of faith to shine from you to them. So allow them to see that example, allow them to see what faith looks like in a life, you know, always be that person that's going to be there to always encourage them to say, let's go ahead and start with faith. Let's go ahead and end with faith. Let's go ahead and move with faith. Let's go ahead and activate that faith. And then after this is, this is, this is number two things. That was one, be that light of faith. Two is make sure that they connect with God for that. Because also God wants to do something within them and do something to them to give them a, a, a super experience to, to the point where it's like, yo, I have no other choice but to have faith. Like, yo, you just show me what you can do. And man, I just, it's hard for me to believe. It's hard for me not to believe at this point. So those two things are important. One, be that light of faith for them. We are called to be the salt, of this, uh, salt on the earth for him. And also make sure that he is a lot, you're allowing him to have that open experience with that person. Okay. Then um, Reggie shared something in here in the group. Are y'all enjoying this? I'm loving this, y'all. I don't know about y'all. Y'all go ahead. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say nothing. I'll speak for everybody. Okay. With faith comes fear, but how much fear or lack of faith will make you double-minded or experiencing mm -hmm. wavering faith? 
So that was kind of answer to the question already, but I didn't read that part till just now, if that makes any sense, James 1 and 8. So let me ask you another question, Reverend Dr. Elder Robinson. So my question is this, y'all come on with the questions, y'all know I don't play. Um, so here, here we are at a crossroads, right? All right. Mm -hmm. And this is just being transparent. We know that you talked about the house. Don't be jumping on the house and your credit scores are 350. You're mm -hmm. not going to get approved for a house, y'all. Get it together. Mm -hmm. you, you can sit there and pray to God till kingdom come from heaven. And you get called and you're going to shum, shum, shum a ding dong seven times around the great wall and the wall comes crumbling down. You're not going to be able to buy a house. Okay, it doesn't work like dream of genie. Jesus, give me a house, fix my credit score. Some things we have to walk out in faith so God can grant us grace and mercy so we can buy that five bedroom house because mama need a place to hide and rest. Okay, so now God is coming to us, Fred, and he says, listen, listen, Lindas, I need you guys to come together on one accord. Y'all listening, come on one accord. And we want, we, I want you to host the workshop, but I want you to host the workshop totally outside the box. I mean, like outside the box, nothing ordinary, not nothing, mm -hmm. you know, that everybody else goes to. They want to learn choreography. They go home miserable. They have not had an encounter with God. But this time I'm going to invite them in, but I'm going to do something amazing differently. Mm -hmm. And then you and God start to talk and you're like, Lo, listen here, God. Now, I don't know about this because people going to talk about me and mm -hmm. I don't know if I have the financial backing to back it up. So my fear is making me fall back versus stepping out. How can you encourage me as a brother, as a, a leader or a mentor or somebody that loves God that has walked the walk? How can you encourage me? to obey God and not fall back in fear, which is the number one thing that we're going to do most of the time because mm -hmm. we're afraid of failure. Go for it, sir. I'm so, so I, <laughs> I definitely say one of the biggest things that we have to remember is his word. And that is his word is not going to return to him null and void. Mm -hmm. So if God has placed this out onto you, and gave you an ex expected, not expiration date, an expected date to have this done, he's not just going to get this to you and just say, you know what, you got it on your own. God is literally going to set things up for you and set you in a position to where you are. It's, it's just going to flow. So the only thing that you have to do is give yourself, is make yourself accessible. You have to make yourself in that posture. You have to say, you know what, God, I, I, I believe and I have faith. So I would just completely encourage you to just say, stay steadfast and unmovable. Continue to keep your eyes open. Continue to actually look for him. Because sometimes we're completely oblivious to what he's doing. Sometimes the crazy thing is, is a lot of times, majority of the times, I say that, he's still moving even in our uncomfortability or even in our fear or even in anything. We're just stepping back because we're looking at the practical instead of focusing on what's going on in the spiritual. God is literally moving his hand in the spiritual where our physical hands can't move. So it's literally us needing to just reposition our eyes and re. But, 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 but Fred, but, but Fred, but Fred, but Fred. But I know once I step out on faith, the, acts are, the, the attacks are going to come. And I just don't know if I'm strong enough to handle these attacks because I know once I step my, my one foot forward, you know, and I put my other foot forward and both of them are standing together in the presence of God and I'm obeying him. But then all these attacks, I just don't know if I can handle it. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Help me out. If God be for you, then who can be against you? And not only that, but a lot, ooh, this is crazy. A lot of times we fight battles that don't even belong to us. We get this reminded to us constantly. We get this said to us repeatedly, numerous of times, but we don't just place it in our minds. We're not fighting this battle. We're just here as what God called us to do. So if God called me to put this workshop and to go forth with it, that's all I have to do. Everybody else that's coming against it, mm -mm. that has nothing to do with me. So do, you, so do you think that 
that even though we're talking to the creative arts, but is this evident in our personal lives also that we should, mm -hmm. as a believer, have faith and substance to believe that my next move in my obedience by opening up my own beauty shop or my mm -hmm. book or obeying by getting college or going to school or getting more knowledge, which gives me more power. Do you think all of that is parallel? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, like I said earlier, it starts within your life before it flows into anything else. So in order for any of this to really happen, you got to trust God for yourself. You got to trust God for, yo, I know you're going to get this stuff done in my life personally before you get it done outside of it. Because how are you going to lead somebody else to Christ and say, you know, I have faith in Christ yourself if you don't even have faith yourself right. it's like you literally have to go through that time for god to show you show you him mm -hmm. just to really experience him to the complete fullest fathomable overall experience that you can have because that's what's going to pour out into everything else that's what's going to overflow into everyone else that's around you that faith that you have instilled in your heart so 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 here come another question then y'all i'm sorry i'm just stalling with y'all while y'all playing y'all y'all don't want to give me no questions i might as well ask the questions doggone it so so reverend dr elder the question i have for you was this so do you think that when god gives us this this step right this faith mm -hmm. step and you know i'm kind of fearful because i don't think i'm qualified enough or i don't have the diploma or i don't have the certificate of ministry that piece of paper that everybody wants and i don't have all of this you know um 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 do you think that all of this is necessary for my faith walk or how does that work is it something that i'm given like worship or is it something that I build upon? Come on, help me out. I don't know where to go with this. So I would say is is numerous of ways. I say one, you're not always gonna have it from the beginning. Because crazy thing is, I was just talking about my I was just talking to my brother about this um yesterday. It's like if we have everything that we needed, then what's the point of faith and what's the point of everything else in between? There's no point. So you literally have to go through that building process. You have to go through that point from where you went from point A to point Z to point E, F, G. You have to build. And not only that, but sometimes we forget about God's grace in the moment. We get so caught up in the motions and the process of it and say, you know what, God, I'm supposed to get this myself. And we don't forget that we don't remember God's grace. Not, not everything is going to be expected. You know what I'm saying? It's not, not everything is going to be expected for us to just naturally get. Some things God is really gonna supersede and say, let me show you my power. Not only let me show you my power, but let me show you what I'm about to bless you with. So sometimes God is literally gonna grace you and say, you know what, there it is. And you're not gonna be able to explain that. And that's gonna be a part of your experience and part of your testimony. So it's really, um, it's really a, uh, a lot of paths, paths there. You're not only gonna build, you're not only going to be grace, but there's going to be some things that sometimes you're not even going to get due to the fact that God doesn't want you to immediately get it in the first place, but he wants you to learn from not getting it in the first place so you can grow to something bigger and grow to something greater. Okay, Reverend Dr. Elder, you're, you're spitting it. You're spitting it. Are y'all getting something over here? I mean, I don't see no comments. I see a little chat. One, Y'all better glorify God for this wisdom because some of y'all sitting on some faith stuff right now and I don't see my chat box lit up. Don't make me come for y'all. That's all I got to say. Y'all better be, um, this thing should be going 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. I should be having like popping up in here. But listen, so um, Reverend Dr. Elder, I have a question for you, right? Yes, ma'am. So we know that the past does not predict our future right mm -hmm. but my question is do you think that our speech is parallel to our faith walk can Ooh. you give me a little whoop did that just like gave you a shundo moment i mean like you were <laughs> wow okay i mean you know like i know this sounds kind of corny but mm -hmm. you know i believe this is just me talking like you know we can say my you know my glass is half empty or I can say my glass is half full. So it's perception of what I project is what I'm gonna get. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So my faith projection in my walk and my growth status and my obedience and gripe, my speech got to be in parallel to
to my mm -hmm. faith walk. Am I, can you elaborate on that? Yes, ma'am. So I definitely say, whew, just like in the beginning, not only faith is the substance of man for all things I hope for, but it's the assurance. If you talk that faith, you're going to grab it with that faith. No doubt. You're going to grab it with that faith that you talk with. So, and it's not only just for the encouragement, but I also, I also support being real in your faith. Sometimes you're not always going to be 100% with your faith. Sometimes you're going to be weak, but that's the moments that we have to not just be real with others, but be real with God. There's a moment that you can say, God, help my unbelief. So God can supersede everything that you feel right now and show you something that's going to boost your belief back up to 2000 and whatever. So we, so it's definitely, you not only have to project it, to receive it and grab it and get it, but you have to be real with God and say, God, help. So you can actually just <laughs> boost my beliefs back up. Mm -hmm. This is so good. So I, I listened to what you said. So the talk, you also have to grab. So, so, so let me ask you a question. Y'all know that we've seen many people, like especially major artists, that, you know, God has allowed them to just catapult them to the forefront and become millionaires from poverty-stricken instances. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and just, y'all make sure you mute yourself, please. Um, you know, um, let me help you out. Okay. So, you know, um, we want to make sure that, and I lost my whole train of thought. Okay. Yeah, here we go. I wrote notes. Okay. So, you know, how people from poverty stricken all of a sudden, like, uh, what's the name of the guy out of Texas? The one that everybody was just recently crazy over. And, um, my grandson loved it. The one with the cowboy, y'all know what I'm talking about, whatever his name is. I mean, nobody knew him. He been writing little things, little things, and all of a sudden that one song, boom, made him famous. Y'all know what I'm talking about anyway, that famous song. So that's the same thing in ministry, that God can use one obedience move in faith mm -hmm. and create a revenue of explosion that we, that he could use the testament from our humble beginnings in obedience, he will make us great. So that also brings a component of faith right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do you think that God uses those kind of miraculous powers to show people that, look, I've created this faith walk for, for instance, me, mm -hmm. no, no college degree, no nothing. And, you know, during COVID, we launched a drive through coffee bar, you know what I'm saying? And so after, I don't know how many failed attempts and how many times we tried to launch it, it just wasn't the right time. We mm -hmm. we lost over fifty thousand dollars in one business venture, mm -hmm. but it wasn't in the right time. Does that make sense? Even though we thought we heard of God, but it wasn't at the right time. But now, I mean, boom! I mean, it is blowing up. So, because of that failure, and I, we lost all that money, we didn't give up dreaming. Mm -hmm. We didn't stop believing we still had faith that it was going to come to pass. So you can fail trying nine times, but that 10th time, it might be a strike mm -hmm. and you might be able to make it. That dream doesn't die because you failed one, two, three, four, five, six times. Mm -hmm. If that burning is still in your heart, that faith still exists. Am I right, Reverend Dr. Elder? Can you expand yeah, on that? You are, you are hitting it on the nail. You are on it completely. Because truthfully, um, those moments that we see other people, it's crazy. It's, it's so crazy because our perspective sets it on, okay, I see them up there. So I just can't, I, I don't know if I can get that. And not only that, but I start to get jealous and I start to get envy. But it's, it's honestly an example for what can happen for your life. God set that up for a moment that you can see like, oh, okay, I can have that. But even in the comparison trap, even when we start saying, oh, wow, they went up so quick, we, we, we don't do our research. A lot of those people that went up so quickly also had to deal with a lot so much and quickly at the same time. And it's, it's crazy, but it, it reminds me of this scripture, to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically as, more, as much as you give me in your faith, as more as I'm going to give you as more is going to come, as more is, is, is just going to exceedingly grow 
even if it doesn't come in on your time and your expectation, it's going to come quicker than you think. All because you're giving yourself even more open to me, regardless. Okay, I have a comment here, and it says, um, that privately inbox me. They say, yes, pride will interfere with faith. Your pride become your vanity. And in mm -hmm. that vanity, sin, your faith is in yourself and not in God. So mm -hmm. he's pretty much talking about being haughty. You think you're arrived. You don't have to listen to God in his obedience. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. becomes a sin. So we mm -hmm. always, we, I believe in faith, we have to have a component of humility. Mm -hmm. Just that makes we have to be see if I'm in a position even when I go to a workshop I'm I don't pay my three hundred dollars to register I'm talking about the three hundred dollar ones not the five dollar one because the five dollar one is about to blow up but anyway mm -hmm. so the three hundred dollar one I've paid my registration I go there but I'm going in a position that they can't tell me Jack because my name is Mama D I've been teaching all over the world I have no reason to go there other than support and I want to be chummy chummy with the leader so that way it put me in a position so I can have the next platform because you know I'm Mama D and I'm, I'm all over the world so I want them to connect to me you know that's the kind of discomplacency where faith would not move because mm -hmm. I'm not in the receptive position Mm -hmm. which is a receivable position because if I'm going there in a haughty attitude and a prideful attitude, then mm -hmm. God can't even use me anyway, because I'm totally out of kilter with him because you have to have a, you know, an obedient component and not being haughty and have a nasty attitude. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so pride blocks, faith activates, humility helps the posture. And that's what I always love. For the majority in God's best or in a group as a whole, everybody I'm connected with, we're not worried about titles because mm -hmm. I'm going to walk in what God has assigned to me. So therefore I can go ahead and do what I have to do. Okay. So mm -hmm. let me see. What do you say about people saying that you're not, you, that you're not as strong and have the same type of strong faith as you always compare themselves to you and using it to give them an excuse to stay in their comfortable position for not grow. Well, shake the devil up. Whoop, 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 shake the devil up. Anyway, go ahead, Fred, go ahead. <laughs> Can you uh, repeat the question one more time? Okay, I'm gonna read it to you. What do you say about people saying that they're not as strong as you and they don't have the same faith as you, right? but mm -hmm. always compare themselves to you and using you as an excuse not to you know step out on faith or not to grow because you know you 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 don't been through this look at you god done brought you out of this look at you you know i ain't that strong i ain't. they they pretty much discredit them themselves they ain't even got nowhere yet that's mm -hmm. pretty much what you feel what i'm saying i'll mm -hmm. be like listen here honey I don't need no, if you ain't getting it by now, all the hell that I've been through back and forth and God not delivering me and you ain't seen what I've been through, baby, you need to either come along with me or I'm going to have to Drop. let you go. But you expand on that because, you know, I'm a little harder. You know, you're a young cat. You have a little bit more patience and you sweet. Mm -hmm. And I know your mom and also, you know, you, you know, I don't have that kind of connection like your mama do, you know. Excuse me. I'll say one thing. Uh, my first question would be is, um, is that real faith? Even that we're speaking about, because what does my faith have to do with your faith? You know what I'm saying? Faith is between you and God, first and foremost. And even if I see myself as see somebody in my group that has less faith than me, what I'm not going to do is point out their faith to themselves. Unless God gets me to the moment where I say, you know what, now it got to come harsh, and now I have to get to the point where I have to take something out your way so you can see it yourself, I'm not going to do that. I'm still going to do it as gracefully as I can. So, or not even that, I'm going to encourage the mess, I'm going to encourage the faith out of you. I was about to say encourage the mess out of you, but I'm about to encourage the faith out of you to the point where you you have no choice but to go. Just like Mama D said, she's going to get you by your hand and take you along and keep you going. And if you don't, if you honestly don't want it, then it's a drop off. That's one thing that we have to get out this, we have to get out this mind state that our assignment is our assignment and what we're called to do is our assignment. The only thing about our assignment is 
it, it the people that we're connected to, mm-hmm. they honestly, it honestly can come to a point where they drop off themselves and just decide not to want to do it, or you keep on pressing with them. You should not. You should not overtire yourself. You should not burn out yourself. Just trying to get them to go. So truthfully, is is I would say um, definitely. And also recheck your circle. I don't know who that is around you that's saying that, but obviously they're not. If they're not conveying it in that way, then um, it's definitely time for a change in the circle. Because one, if it's not if it's not um, piercing your heart the right way, or it's not um, in a good, critical, positive, constructive way, mm-hmm. then truthfully, it's time to really change your circle up. Because right. if it's not helping you grow. Then it's time to go. <laughs> You're not growing. You got to be going. Now, anyway, mm-hmm. so um, the next question I have for you here is where is the line drawn for people who test God and those who actually have faith? For example, there are some people who think they have inc- inv- in- invincible, that they are invincible because of their faith and do reckless things to test the power of God, thinking he's going to move. Oh, hold on is going to move, he's going to move anyway. Oh, there, okay, go ahead. Did, did you hear the question? You want me to repeat it? No, I, I heard it. Okay. Um, I would say, I would say where you draw the line is is, is two things. Practicality, we're gonna hit, hit on that first, practicality. One. I mean, if I sit here and just jump in front of a train track and just say, I have faith, I'm not going to get hurt. Nine times out of ten, I'm here. Not even nine times out of ten. We're going to, yeah, mom, I'm sorry, but we're about to have a eulogy. Yeah, (laughs) go ahead and get ready. Right, exactly. Go ahead. (laughs) And then the next thing that we pretend to forget about with that is faith without works is dead. A lot of times when we get to that point where we say, you know what? I have faith that God is going to do this. I have faith God is going to do that. We forget about the work that we have to do in the middle of that. We forget about the, the um, even if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, what I'm going to do with that seed is I'm going to plant that in the ground so I can have a harvest later. But what we do is we tend to forget about planting that. So we just say, God is just going to give me the harvest instead of just actually working for that. So like I said, practicality and working for that faith. And that's, that's big too, big too. All right, Reggie, ask a question. Since you put it in everyone, I, I'm assuming I can repeat it, okay? He says, what are some benefits in faith, especially for those struggling with complete confidence slash faith? I have to repeat this scripture that I said earlier. If God is for me, then who can be against me? So if I literally have faith in God, and there's literally, I'm not going to say you're impervious, but it's the assurance that is going to happen. It's the assurance that everything is going to come to pass. It's the assurance, no matter what, that God is going to keep his word for you. So now that I believe, now that I know that I'm going to have the access, now that I, I'm going to change my perspective, I'm going to change my mindset, I'm going to change it out of, oh, I just, I'm just going to go with the day and I'm going to just go with the motions and the flow of things. Instead of... Um, having that type of mindset, you're going to have the faith mindset. You're going to have the eyesight of, oh, okay, now I want to look to see what God is about to do. I'm going to be always in a position and a heart posture to say, you know what? I got to see what God about to do today. So I'm about to look for it. I'm not about to miss anything that God is about to do in my life because I really want to see this. So it keeps you, it, it really just shifts you in a complete different position, mm-hmm. a complete different posture than where you were before. It, you literally, everything has changed with faith. This is so good. The questions keep coming. I'm sorry, Fred. Can oh, pride funny. can pride hurt your faith? Yes, completely. When, uh, basically, pride is saying with your faith, I can do it instead of God doing it for me. And it just leaves everything out in between. Like, instead of saying, you know what? Because with faith, faith, I wanted to say this a while ago. Faith is not only just you believing that this is going to happen, but it's the acknowledgement to God that I, that says, I believe that you're bigger than me and you're the one that's going to do this instead of me. So when pride steps in, it's different. Pride says, you know what? This is me. I can do it. I can get it done. I can work for this car. I can work for everything I can get. Knowing that nine times out of ten, it may not happen. It definitely wouldn't happen without Christ. Definitely would say it wouldn't happen without Christ. 
I think that has a lot to do if you look at it, even in ministry in the creative arts. Mm -hmm. If I go in, oh, you hitting on something already. In 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 a mindset, if I go into the mindset that tonight. God, I want you to use me. I'm going to deny my flesh. I want you to just use me. And whatever your will to do is your good pleasure. That means I'm going to surrender to your will completely. That's mm -hmm. your good pleasure. That's what the word says, that I have to surrender and I have to submit into him. Mm -hmm. That you can use me. And whatever you do, God, let healing unfold through my ministry. Let mm -hmm. it unfold. Let it flow from heart to heart and breast to breast. That one move will strike the enemy's camp so powerful and one spin or one mind component will set the captive free if mm -hmm. i go in with that type of faith in mm -hmm. ministry do you know how powerful we are just for instance with all the creative arts behind crystal and her paintings all of her pictures behind her bring life to this setting right here but she doesn't know that it brings life you're speaking with your hands and just being dynamic. You're bringing us in by your teaching. Doesn't mean everything that we do has to have a component of faith. When we get up in the morning, believing that God is going to use us to love on the ones that are unlovable or don't think that they're lovable or mm -hmm. that you're the ones that you're, you know, braiding hair and God is just utilizing you to just say a kind of word. You know, we become so deep that we forget the humility and faith component that we are his vessels to go out mm -hmm. and show the faith component to others that listen, if God can use me to open up a full blown insurance agency doing well, you're listening to me. And not only that line up all the people in the faith structure because of all the stuff that's going on here in our town, you know, Corona is just spiking all over a sudden going up. And so I have to believe, but I have to use the daily wisdom of what they know that I cannot put my hand in the sand and act like Corona is not here. I mm -hmm. still have to believe that God is going to bring a remedy, but in the, use, in the meantime, I have to shut my door mm -hmm. and use the drive through only. If you want to make a payment, I'm coming to you with a mask mm -hmm. because we still have to have an earthly sense that God is moving in faith, but we cannot ignore the very essence of our life. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So he is using, you know, when you look at the Bible, he always used people of humble position to make them great. Mm -hmm. I have not seen one person in the Bible where they've already been established. No, he took the fishermen. He took the, the you know, I mean, he took the humble people and make them great. Mm. So can you imagine what he's doing with us? Can you imagine what he's doing with each and every one of you right now? And mm. what he's doing in the faith component. And sometimes with all of this stuff that's going on, he's just hiding us in the cleft of the rock. He's preparing us for the greatness. So when we come out, we come out with all cannons blazing because we've been humble enough to be still so we can hear from him when it's time for us to move in mm. faith. All this time in obedience in the cleft of the rock, we're still in faith. Even mm. though that faith is not moving where we think it should be, God mm. is still moving in faith. Completely. I mean, it's, 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 okay, let's see. Let's see here. Let's see here. Somebody, okay, so, 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 okay, so God downloaded something for me to birth and a day later, and I got on the call, basically the same thing I was thinking is send me of what they are doing. I begged out a little because I didn't want them to think I was copying. So I'm in a dilemma. Kim, get on here and tell us what you're talking about, girl. Definitely. Yeah. Kimber. Can you expand on that, Kim, please? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. So basically what God gave me as I download in my spirit, it's the same thing I got on a Zoom call with somebody. And it was basically the same thing. So my faith backed out a little bit. And I'm not sure if I should go forward with that. But I am in a posture of praying for it, whether or not it, it should be birthed. Well, let me, let me tell you this, first of all, Kim, that we have to understand that with faith, like he said, is the assurance. When God gives you something, it's always going to come to enhance the mm -hmm. kingdom 
or it's going to enhance his love component. One of the two is going Definitely. to happen. And when he speaks it, there, there is no doubt in obedience. It's doubt mm -hmm. in our flesh. Mm -hmm. So you have to fully persuade yourself in God what he requires in the seat. Come on, Reverend Dr. Elder, bring it to us, bring it to us, bring it to us. And there's definitely, I would say, there's definitely always a moment. Like I said, there's a, there can be a point where you say, God, help my unbelief. So God, is 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 God wants, he invites us to sit here and um, always come back to him and say, you know what? Give me confirmation. Give me, let, let me have something to grasp onto so I can boost my faith even more. So even this moment when you're unsure, say, you know what, God, you know what, show, make, make sure, let, help me, confirm this with me. This is where our, um, our discernment comes in. Like, God, yo, help me, confirm this with me before I move this out. And he says, basically, based off your heart and based off you wanting that pureness and not just trying to say, you know what, I just want the same thing as that. I just want to, uh, I just want to, uh, you want what God wants. You want his best intent. You want his will. So based off of that, and you at going back to ask him with that, he'll definitely sit here and say, you know what? I got you. I'll show you even more. Right. And not only that, we also want to add a component of this, Fred, that we have to understand. I'm going to let you come in, Eva. Unmute yourself. Is that the fact that we want to make sure that we're still. Mm -hmm. Oh, big God. Oh, man. Because if you're not still, you will allow people to talk you out the very essence of your faith in God. Eva, you have a lot of static, girl. I, I, I got my earphones in. It's still static. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Is it better? Yeah. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, to respond to you, Kim, I, I was in a similar situation with uh, before I started Peculiar Generation. Um, and let me, let, me, let me give you this. Picture this in your head. Um, there are different brands of bread. There are different people that's called to be photographers, but yet each one of them has their own little thing. So you don't think that this one big vision that you know God may have given you or the thing that he, he's put inside of you that he put inside, inside of somebody else. So back to what I was saying as far as with my, uh, with my academy, uh, the other person had the vision too, uh, she had hers before. I didn't even know all this, but long story short, she didn't execute on it. I, I executed on mine, but the key thing was what you said is that you're listening to God. And if he's put it within you, it's just you having that faith. You can't allow uh, something that you see or hear to hinder you from going forth with, with the vision. As long as God is saying, hey, I need you to do it. And he's going to keep giving it to you. No doubt. He's going to keep giving it to you. He's going to put pressure on it. And you're so worried about what this person is going to think. No, ma'am. Don't, don't, don't get that in the back of your head. Know that, okay, God, what did you say? And mm -hmm. you keep giving it to me. You done gave me the plan. You done showed this to me. Then not, now your next step, God, I pray that you give me enough faith to step out on the faith to do this. So uh, go for it, sis. That's what I say. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. The thing is this, that we have to be very careful. Let me tell you this too. We have mm -hmm. to be very careful who we communicate our faith walk with. That's All right? Because yeah. if they don't have the same component of faith or they might be weary or they just jealous of your faith walk and they trying to hinder you from going where God is trying to take you. You have to be very careful that you're not connecting with leeches that are trying to suck out the blood of Jesus Christ out of your ministry, that you are going forward in what God requires. Just like last week, Kim, remember how we shared to you with you that God is getting ready to expediently give you visions and dreams fast. Like I even talked about you at the beginning of the call. So make sure you play back. Um, I think I record it, maybe not, but anyway, so, but God is getting ready to LX accelerate you, even though you're fighting against it, your faith got to be in submission in complete, um, trusting. And like he said, in the assurance that God's got your back. That's like a person when God gives somebody an assignment to do a workshop and you don't have the finances, you got to believe that when God spoke it, he will back it up completely physically, spiritually, financially, a hundredfold. There won't be any lack. 
and I've brought major artists in. When God spoke it, there was perfect zero balance. Not nothing that I needed, nothing that I required. And even if God spoke it and there was going to be lack, God was going to refill that and make sure that there was no lack. Because my obedience is the assurance that God is walking in faith and your obedience will show them what God is doing. And therefore, they have no choice. But like he said, when, they, when people doubt, you show the faith light. Show that faith light so they can see the macroless works of God. That's what it's all about. He's showing himself on display through us. But are we willing to step out on faith and do what it requires? So many, you know, one of the things that Miles Moreau said, he said, the richest place on earth, and I always talk about this, the richest place on earth is what? The cemetery where all dreams and visions pass away. Don't be, leave this earth empty, Kim. Leave it empty, pour it out in obedience to God with the faith walk that he's assigned to your life. You know, and God has connected you with some great, great, great people, great people of influence. You are an influencer. And listen to what, listen to what Eva said. We look up to you, girl. So don't you allow these naysayers to talk you out of what God has intended for you to just be still and know that he's God and obey in his season when he tells you to move. And let me tell you, and let me ask you this, Reverend Dr. Elder. So do you think it's a good idea? And I know it sounds kind of feminine, but is it a good idea for us to journal what God instructs us at nighttime, in the morning, in the evening, like all of this? The reason why I record this is not for me. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you, it's not for me. I record this so you guys can go back and say, hey, 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 remember back then in, you know, 2020, Mama D, you know, I might be up there shouting on the streets to go, but you know, Mama D, you remember? And you can go right back to my YouTube channel if that still exists at that time, who knows? <laughs> but in the meantime, do you follow what I'm saying? Because this is so important. We have to have the substance of God and what he intends for us to be in the creative arts, how we can be effective in ministry. Mm. Go ahead, Dr. Fred. I say, um, let me answer that in two in numerous ways. I, I promise you, it's a bunch of uh, branches for this. But one, uh, it serves as a reminder for us, regardless. It serves as something to not only encourage us, but it's something to keep us on track. And not only that, for something to uh, make sure that we see for ourselves, like, you know what, okay, I see this is what God said is going to happen. And this is what I'm going to actually work for as a task. And not only that, but even when I feel discouraged, and even when I feel like, uh, I don't know where to go, I'm just senseless, that's there. And not only that, but when we write that, in our knowledge, it's not only just for us, but it's us giving that back unto God. Like, God, this is your word that you placed down here on this earth for me to uh, complete. So with that being said, this is back on you. I'm accessible for you. So now you have to keep your word in the midst of that as well. That's amazing. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm writing notes and I'm trying to keep up here. Okay, so right, so let me, and let me see if there's any more questions. Shelly. Uh, Michelle, do you have something? Hey, Ma, I got to log off and help my daughter out. Okay, gotcha. You're good, girl, because I saw her putting a note in there. Okay, um, Gigi said, we have to remember that God is so, she didn't just put S-O, she said, so, y'all know she's extra, so big, and he was more than enough ideas to share with everyone in earth billions on the top of billions times. Exactly. Because, you know, the one thing that I love about the creative well, all right, when you have a relationship of God with God, he's going to assign the things to you that you're capable of putting out in faith. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Like if I'm not a people's person, Reverend Dr. Elder Robinson, if I'm not a people's person, he might not project me to be in front of people because I don't know how to communicate. Come on. He That's might right. have me to be a person in the back helping somebody else create the books. I might be a publisher. I might be something that I'm good at. God always gives us an assignment mm -hmm. to what we're supposed to do in this time and this age. Listen, the one thing that I struggle with, this is Mama D talking, this is Mama D talking. 
I don't like it when we go to an assignment or we go to a worship or we go to a creative arts conference or whatever the case might be, right? And we go to these places and you have all these people that are there in attention, but they're not going anywhere. They just, they're spectating. They don't know how to dive in. They don't know how to submit. They don't know how to receive from God. And you know, the one thing I don't play, I'll come snatch you by your earlobe. You better come on up here and dance with us. I don't care what you're wearing. You better come on tomorrow. Make sure you wear something a little bit more appropriate, but you know, you're going to come fly with us because I want them to feel the heartbeat of God. Because if I'm sitting on the sideline, I'm spectating, I'm finding fault. There Mm -hmm. is no faith walk on the sidewalk. Mm-mm. there Mm-mm. is no walk period but we have to understand that our obedience is a light to somebody else's pathway for sure did y'all hear that our mm-hmm. obedience and our faith walk is a light to somebody else's pathway so if i can open up an insurance company i have absolutely no college degree i have my ged i learn english from soap operas I mean, like, come on. And if you close your eyes, you think I'm black, which everybody thinks I'm anyway. But the thing is this, that, you know, we have to be obedient to what God is assigned to our lives. We have to step into our faith component. We can't be mad at everybody else. Like, I love what Donna posted earlier. Um, He said, watch your connections because it's very important for us to understand who is for us and who's not for us. But if we don't have a connection with God, then we don't really see who is for us and who's not for us because we can identify the disposition they're in because we don't have no spiritual covenant with the heavenly father. So he can't really show us their disposition and what we're supposed to do in their life. So we connected with anybody and anything and our message and our connections are tainted because of our connections. And you know how they always say, um, who you hang around is who you become. Well, guess what? You don't ever see me with nobody. So the only person you see me hanging around is Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? So that's who I'm going to become because I get up in the morning, I talk to him and, but that's how it has to be. We have to be in totally communication and please for your deep folks, stop being so deep. Just be who God called you to be because in order for us to be effective in ministry, God wants you to be the best you. Mm -hmm. And you know, somebody told me not too long ago, it's like, well, you know, you're one of the worst leaders. People don't love you and they don't care for you and you know, blah, blah. And that thing, I was sharing it with Eva, that thing kicked me to the core because my heart is not like that. That's why we have to make sure that our heart is pure. Because if not, if you don't know who you are, who you represent, then you'll allow anything or anybody to come Mm -hmm. to you and tell you anything. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Listen, honey, but you know, you always want to self-check. You want to make sure that when you speak, you project clearly. You don't want to be offensive. You want to make sure that your faith walk is upright, that your faith walk is in obedience. And by God, that your faith walk has some kind of component that will show up his glory. Let me tell you something. All right. So tell me this, Reverend Dr. Elder. Is it okay for us to have faith? for a red Jaguar with black leather interior with the latest GPS and sound system with both speakers. And I could be specific because I belong to the king and I do everything and I'm speaking it into existence. Is it okay to have that kind of faith work? Because people are telling me that it's not good to ask for his hand if I've never worked for his heart. Ooh, Mm. come on now. I felt that $5. My cash app is, now let me stop. (laughs) All right. So what do you have to say about that, sir? I say, you hit it on the nail just then. It's impossible to really ask for something if you really haven't even connected with the person as really the one that's giving out anything. And then two, um, we definitely have to change our perspective just because we're getting something great does that mean what we're asking for is great for us that's what that time with god and literally being in that moment with him is for is because he's going to change your desires into his desire so instead of you just being like oh i want this i want that i want that no he's going to change your desires and say you know what i want what's needed for me and then he's going to give you some the crazy thing is he loves us so much he's going to give us some after that 
So whew, you hit that on the nail, though. Oh my God. So, so, so Reverend Dr. Elder Robinson, let me ask you one more question. Okay, so <laughs> you know, back in the day, I can't speak for y'all young bucks over here in this group. Okay, I can only speak for this old lady. Back in the day, your mom can probably vouch for this. If you didn't drive an old beat up car and you did not drive where the, you know, going like this, put, 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 barely makes it to the church parking lot, you weren't being prosperous. Is that faith? Um, I mean, break it down for me. Break it down. Are we supposed to be elect to be faithful? Help me out here. Help me out. I want the Jaguar. I want the Jaguar. I got a, I, I got a, uh, uh um, who? God just got through kicking my butt about this because I'm now in a different position than where I was before. I actually just came out from having a red little cobalt. And then um, not only that, but the job I was actually working at, I was working as a substitute teacher. So in this time of uh, COVID hitting down and everything else, I was like, oh, my pockets are not looking great. And I always felt like as a minister of Christ, you can't just come out here any type of way with your life. And I always felt like that was one of the number one things that God was saying, you know what, let that, let that be the light of me. But truthfully, he's saying, let the light of me from your heart shine up. He's not saying, you know what, you got to have all the glamorous things. You got to have A point B, C, D, E, F, G, because the craziest thing, he want the people to see your process. He want them to see, you know what, I brought you from the right here to up here. So don't worry about all that that you haven't received yet. Even the things that you may want, you haven't received it yet. You haven't received what I have for you. But for right now, I want you to get everything. I want you to get your heart right here. I want you to get your mind right here. I want you to get all of that there before I give you anything else. Because if I, even if that, if I give you everything else before I even get your heart and your mind right, you, you're not even going to treat it right. Not only are you going to treat it right, but where's your faith going to be if I give that to you first before you get your heart right? And the question is also, um, excuse me, are you tithing like Reggie said? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Are you doing everything in parallel to the Heavenly Father? Or is the card note going before you're tithing? Come on, y'all be real about it. Okay, so we have another question for you. We're about to shut it down in a few minutes. So the question is, can it be possible for more than one person to have a similar vision but when that happens, consult God. It happened a situation when you're supposed to collab that happened to me before, and it happened to me recently. I brought up great ideas and assets to the vision, and so did the other person. You know what that means? That's just confirmation to me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, boom, listen, we're in the vein. But just making sure, because there are a lot of duplicators, they'll agree with you, but they're just trying to hear what you got. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to snatch it up Quite. and run with it. You got mm -hmm. to be very careful. So just make it sure. <laughs> listen, 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 Linda, use wisdom when you spread your faith walk. Because <laughs> they'll snatch it up and run with it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. just make it sure that you definitely listen, listen, listen. So faith is a total trust in God. Faith is a total submission to God. Faith is the assurance that he got our back mm -hmm. when he tells us to do so. Am I right? Okay. All right. So listen, did y'all have any more questions? Anything y'all have for a Reverend Dr. Elder Robinson? Y'all see how I'm sliding that in. He just don't know, Mother and Catherine, that he is just getting all set up. Mm -hmm. nervous this was really good you guys did y'all get something out of this did y'all have any more look at, look at here reverend dr l you coming from good stock that's all i got to say you're a young buck with all that wisdom listen you better keep on flagging and you better keep on obeying god your mama you come from good stock did y'all have any more questions for him let me see if anybody else is in here did i miss anything i don't think i did i think i got everybody okay go ahead eva I didn't have a question for Fred. I just when I just hopped on, and as he was speaking and he was ministering to the people, uh, God just kept saying Solomon. And so I asked God, I said, "Well, what you mean by you know continuing to say Solomon?" And he was like, "A man of great influence. Uh, Solomon was one of the wisest men uh, that was ever king, and uh, he had great influence with the people uh, the, over the decisions that he made as far as with his wealth, as far as with investing and all these different things." So. What God was saying is that 
uh, Fred, that you have a lot of wisdom that he has given you and you are going to be a great influencer. You, matter of fact, you already are. The other thing that I kept seeing was you in this suit. <laughs> and I, kept, I was kind of laughing about it. I was like, why are you keep showing me in the suit? But you were in this suit and you were, um, it almost looked like you was on like the one of the Fortune 500 companies, like you were walking in business attire. However, you were speaking to all of these young men. So I don't know if you have a passion uh, for the young men within your community or the guys that you hang out with, but you're going to be a great influencer uh, to them. They follow behind you and follow different things that you do. Um, the other thing that God just uh, showed me is that the word that's within you is just so rich and, and there's such a depth to it that, uh, you know, it, it flows easily for you. And that's just him just, you know, he's he, when you eat the word and you're digesting it and you're taking it in and, and you have it within you, it easily flows out of you. Uh, but you continue to do what God is calling you to do and continue to walk that walk of faith and stepping out on faith and continue to keep put him first. But definitely, I suggest you read up on Solomon because that, that's what I kept hearing for you. Mm. That's, 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 woo! Listen, listen, listen. You know what I love? What I love the fact that you can get young men, like all of us in the group, young men and women, to just come and just be you and teach the real you, because that's what's going to eventually bring the people to Christ. You know, like when you meet somebody, he's like, man, how you doing? Yeah, I'm highly favored of the Lord. Okay, it doesn't work like that. You hear me? You know, hey, I'm having a little bit of a rough day. Pray for the sister. Peace out, you know, but you got to remain that light status. Let me tell you something. People know real. They identify real they identify the true essence some people will talk about you don't matter you be real you be who god called you to be and don't change for nobody unless god tells you what to do because people will put you in some places and situations man that you don't need to be in listen um something else i was going to share um i'm gonna hit stop recording let me stop